Okay guys, I have to jump on early. I said 6.30, sorry, come a little early today, had something come up. But this will be short and sweet and I hope very helpful for some of you out there. Uh, first of all, I hope you're having a wonderful start to 2020. Uh, if you made some New Year's resolutions, hats off to you. I hope those are going well. I hope you have implemented a plan to get there. And if you haven't, I think that's something I'll probably come on next week. We'll talk about plans and creating goals and then creating a plan to get to um, our goals. Uh, very important. It's hard to have goals and not have something uh, in place to get there and stuff. So uh, I think that'll be a good one next week we'll talk about. But this week, I want to talk about three easy, uh, big three factors when it comes to nutrition that we can modify that can help you uh, lose the weight that you want. Okay. Uh, so we're going to break them down into three categories and we'll talk about each one a little bit and which one I think is the most important uh, or the easiest to control uh, to help you maintain your calories where they need to be. Okay. So again, energy balance is weight loss, right? So we have to be consuming less calories than burning. Okay. I can do a whole nother. It's a good talk too. Maybe we'll do that one. All right. But later. So the three categories I'm going to talk about right now are one is going to be the size of meals. Okay. Size of meals. That's small. I'm sorry. I'll try a little bigger. Okay. The second one is going to be what we actually choose to eat. I have horrible handwriting. Okay. So we have size of meals, portion sizes, what we actually choose to eat and meal frequency. So how often do we eat? Maybe we can fit that in there. Meal frequency. Okay. Right out of the roof. That's all right. So meal, these are the big three things that we really, when it comes to nutrition that I talk about, or I, I think about that can be manipulated to make your diet uh, what it is, okay? Uh, so you get a pie, you slash it up in three ways. But when it comes to weight loss, what one is the easiest to control without counting calories, okay? So first of all, I'm a big believer in spending some time actually counting calories. Now, if this gives you anxiety, if it stresses you out too much to do, or you've had disordered eating in the past, probably not the best choice to do. If it's just you don't want to take time, then I honestly don't think that's a good excuse because this is a life skill. If you do this for a few months, actually count out your calories, actually look at your portion sizes, it's going to carry over for the rest of your life. You will know what a six ounce piece of chicken looks like. You will know what a cup of rice looks like. So you're not over consuming because so many people underestimate the amount of calories they're actually consuming because of the portion sizes. Okay. However, I'm talking about now, say we're not going to count calories. This is just the easiest manipulative thing that you can do with your diet. Okay. And that's going to be meal frequency. How many meals or what is the time frame that you eat it? And so another way of what this is kind of getting to is intermittent fasting. Okay. Uh, if we just condense the amount of time that we eat in a day. So a lot of times you'll hear a 16, eight, I, I fast for 16 hours. I only eat for eight. That naturally is going to make you consume less calories because you have less time of the day to eat. All right. Now, even if you do this, I think it's very important that you use some kind of tracker. There is a, uh, I can't remember. There's, there's a study out there that someone's doing, uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick did it, but it's fine. Um, just using a app out there to track how long you've been eating throughout the day is very, very is an easy way to just naturally reduce the amount of calories that you're going to consume in a day without even paying attention to it. Okay. Um, start with something if you eat throughout the day, most people, again, just like we underestimate how many calories we eat, people underestimate how much of the day they're actually eating from the first bite of something to the last bite. I think the average is for the American is like 14 hours in the day. 
that they're eating for the first bite they have a day till the last bite they have and then go to sleep. So that's a long time to be consuming food. Okay, so I'm a bit getting ran faster was currently I'm trying to put on weight. Yeah, I'm talking about the opposite issue that I'm talking about right now. Uh, but um, for losing weight, if you consume a lot, are usually frequently throughout the day and we want to try fasting what up will how are you doing man excited for your call in a little bit here i will probably be jumping on the watch a little bit of that free money no one will understand that but um so i would say start at like a 16 8 so 16 hours fast eight hours consume okay don't just naturally jump to a really condensed time frame or else your body won't be ready for it and you won't be ready for it and you're probably gonna be miserable um so what I would say is start at 16 8, then you could switch to a uh, 18 6. So you consume food for six hours and then you don't eat for 18 hours after that, okay? Uh, so again, meal frequency. Easiest factor of these three that we can manipulate for you to decrease the amount of calories you're going to consume in a day so you don't go over if you are trying to lose weight, okay? What we choose to eat really doesn't have a huge factor when it comes to weight loss. Now, it's still an important factor, but again, I'm focusing this talk on weight loss because what we choose to eat is gonna come, it's very important when it comes to micronutrients like our vitamins and minerals. Certain foods like vegetables, fruits, you know, healthy uh, meat are gonna have more micronutrients, okay? Micronutrients don't dictate if we lose fat or not but they are very important for other functions in the body that we need. So you technically could, technically could sit there and eat gummy bears all day long. As long as your calories were less than you were burning, you could lose weight. However, you would probably be very nutritiously deficient in many categories if you did that. And you'd probably be very hungry. So what you choose to eat also can dictate your satiety, how full you are. So if you want to stay more full, there's certain foods that are better than other foods. That's where this would come in a little bit, but again, that's a lot more thinking about what you need to buy, what you need to consume. Uh, it's important, but again, the easiest one, I, again, I think to manipulate is how often you're eating, okay? And then the last one is size of meals. So portion sizes, very, very important. However, if we eat less meals in a day, our portion sizes, can, sizes most likely can get bigger. Now, if they get too big and we binge eat, that's gonna put us in the surplus. We are not going to lose weight because we're actually going to gain weight, all right? However, size of meals, I think, takes probably the most work to dictate, okay? If, we, if you ate a lot of meals, and there's research out there that shows there's no benefit to eating six meals a day to eating one meal a day when it comes to weight loss. There's nothing. The only thing they kind of talk about is if you, you want, maybe if you bunch your carbs together a little bit, no matter what time of day, you just eat your carbs all around each other, that helps a little bit with some benefits in the body but other than that when it comes to actual how many meals you eat no research to, to back it up okay uh, so if you choose to eat six meals a day hats off to you that's totally fine if you're a breakfast eater great I'm not but if you are there's again no added benefit to do either or what works for you to get the results you want that's what um, pretty much what science is is you have to figure out what works for you I mean we can do studies on masses but some things you just aren't gonna work for you all right so we can try we keep playing the game we keep Guessing, educate guessing, try it for yourself. Does it work perfect? If it doesn't, let's try to find something else, okay? But if we do six meals a day, then we have to pay attention to more of the portion size. But I think portion size is the hardest thing to track. Why? Because you actually have to get a scale out. You have to get a measuring cup out. You have to be very cognizant of how much you're eating at every meal, which in reality, it's not hard. It's just more time consuming. And a lot of times, well, of us, we don't have time, right? It's annoying to go sit there and take a cup of rice, put it in a measuring cup, put that on the plate. Or it's annoying to pull out the, the scale and then you have to zero it out. And then you have to put the food in and be like, oh, and then you have to turn it to grams or turn it to ounces based off whatever you're doing. That takes time and it can be annoying. However, again, back to what I talked about earlier, I think if you are really committed to trying to figure out how much you're losing, and you don't have, again, disordered eating, if you don't get anxiety about thinking about it, um, if you don't get stressed, constantly thinking about how much you're eating, you should take the time to do this because you're gonna learn a lot about yourself. You're gonna learn a lot about your dietary habits if you do it that way. But this is the simplest things, all right? So size of meals, I think is the most time consuming. 
uh, factor that you can modify to try to decrease the amount of calories you're eating without counting calories. What we choose to eat for the most part is not going to have a huge difference when it comes to uh, the amount of calories we're consuming. You know, yes, there are some more foods that are are higher in calories, are easier to consume lots of amounts, like right carbs, chips. We can sit there and, and play. big ones are nuts. People think nuts are healthy, which overall they are, but they're very easy to eat a lot of them and they're a lot of calories. Um, but more importantly, what we choose to eat is going to be a lot more important when it comes to our nutrients, okay? And satiety. Some foods are going to make us feel fuller uh, versus other foods that really aren't going to make us feel full and then we're going to consume a lot more, okay? But again, that requires a, a lot of thinking. I think the easiest of the three that we can manipulate to try to keep you in a caloric deficit so that you are not eating more calories than you are burning is going to be the amount of times you eat in a day and doing some kind of restriction on that because you're not thinking about much other than, okay, it's 10 a.m., I'm going to start eating. Oh, it's 6 p.m., I'm done. However, but don't think that's going to be perfect. Like, don't think that because if you just made this window smaller, you have the green light to eat as much as you want, all right? In general, it's an easy way to condense it in the day to force you to eat less. But again, you can still overconsume in that period if you decide to eat too much. All right. Um, so I think that is all I'm going to go over today. If you have any questions about this, uh, please feel free to comment and I will answer any questions. I can jump back on live and answer them or I'll just send a message uh, to you. I hope this helps. And I think next week i'll jump on eventually and we'll talk about goals and planning i think that'd be a big one especially because it's still early in january and i assume many of you probably started some new uh plans and goals here um thank you will thank you very much thanks for sitting in um and also if you didn't know it i just started my new youtube channel so subscribe my plans to drop about two videos a week one's gonna be more uh, nutrition and then one's probably gonna be more of an exercise based video to start with and then I think we'll just kind of run with it and see what the demand is there all right so again if you haven't you can see it go to the YouTube channel the defensive doctor and subscribe and I will see you all later have a wonderful Wednesday and a great uh, end to your week take care see you well thank you